Hey, Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim unboxing videos, the series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox products and read the cards while letting you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back, and relax as we dive into this unboxing. I am your host, Vlad, and this is Scotty. Thank you very much, Scotty, for the wonderful introduction. And today, we're having a look at something unique. And I don't believe it has been done before to this extent. It is the Ravnica Edition Cluedo, or the Ravnica Cluedo Edition, <laughs> because it's more Ravnica than it is Cluedo, I guess. It is supposed to be a spin or a twist off of the official Cluedo in and of itself. So it's nice, it's themed with Ravnica, but it's not just a Cluedo game. It is actually a game in and of its own where you play Magic the Gathering, you take two packs, you mix them up, you create your own deck, and then there are some specific rules, and there is a special booster with some special Cluedo cards or Clu uh, cards that are only available in this one booster. And there's also a Shockland box topper and then the different kind of things. So I'm excited to try this. I'm also excited to try and play this with my wife. So we'll see how this one goes. We will open up in here and let's get cracking. Now, of course, you might have seen this already as we've been very busy making our own car marketplace for the UK. It's a cake exclusive. So if you're interested in buying or selling some of these products, you'll be able to find them on our website. Uh, this is the box proper, the top. So the top just has that and of course you'll want to keep the box unless you don't really care for the game this is a proper setup game in and of itself so you'll have here a way to basically hide your position and uh, your assumptions and things that you make i i, I will say i played cluedo or clue once before only once and you are supposedly in the game trying to figure out the culprit the room and the utensil that was used to kill the person so you are trying to exclude out of the different clues that you get and uh, yeah i think these are all the same so these are just going to be the blocker so you can just block and great i guess draw your own conclusions and keep them hidden then you have right here we have the cluedo tracker so you can just eliminate things that for example the ones that you don't think are suspects the ones that you don't think are going to be the weapons that were used and the rooms so i was right about that <laughs> that's good that's pretty nice and of course this, everything is mtg themed and then in here you have the i guess a little bit of an information about the different characters and clue because uh, these for example kernel mustard i don't remember the other ones so i think these are the official characters of the game proper and then you have the rules so these are going to be the characters there you go you can check i'm just going to do this okay let's see my esteemed colleague you are hereby invited to my humble home for an evening of dinner and conversation a meeting of the minds on the future of guild unity bring only an open heart a sympathetic ear and an empty stomach and don't be late so that is the message and of course these are the rules to the game proper i will stop if you want to i mean you can stop it if you want to read them otherwise there you go i will not go through them uh, this is not supposed to be a guide on how you play the game it's more to look at the contents and if it's really worth so this is the confidential folder i guess this is where you actually put what you think are uh, or maybe is the, is the actual ones that have committed the crime then the place and the utensil that was used the instrument or whatever you want to call it and then you have very beautiful ravnica clue edition shockland box stopper and if you can see i don't know if it shows but it's got an intricate silver laid illustration behind it so it's quite 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 gorgeous and this is going to be the box stopper land and then you get here the cards the unique cards that you're going to have in each one and then in here you're going to be able to put the suspects and the weapons in the room so i guess this is all the cards that you'll be able to find and then let's see through them okay i don't want to throw away any of this stuff by accident so i'm just going to open up the shockland box stopper because you know i mean the shocklands in and of itself there's many of them reprinted and uh, even recently um, the ravnica remaster so they're not the hardest thing to find but it seems such a shame to have ruined something like this so we got the blood crypt this will be with the cluedo or clue edition ravnica edition 
expansion theme and expansion symbol as you can see and that's that's very nice so that's the block group that we have found then the next step we have i'll try and keep this because this came with that so suspect and weapons and rooms so we have this so we'll open this up and keep this in a separate place so you have the wrench the candlestick the lead pipe the knife and the rope all are part initially of cluedo so the the game itself had these as possible weapons but of course as you can see they're also equipment so this equips and the creature gets plus one plus one has vigilance for three tap target creature this one equip creature gets plus one plus one uh, and has whenever this creature attacks surveil two this one gives the quick creature plus two plus zero whenever quick creature dies each opponent loses a life and as long as it's your turn equip creature gets plus one plus zero and has first strike and then equip creature gets plus one plus two and has reach and can be blocked by more than one creature and then you have a ballroom and it's battlefield tap and it adds any of the auras of and then you can four tap investigate create a clue you have the billiard room conservatory the dining room the hall the kitchen the library the lounge the secret passageway the study and these are going to be placed in here so for now and then you have apothecary white senator peacock mastermind plum headliner scarlet emissary green and colonel mustard i mean commander master sorry so yeah these are, are our suspects and or people that are not and there's one cult in there next we have what do we have in here this and comes in this one you have i don't really know what these are you can't really put anything i think maybe they're dividers of sorts okay i'm gonna try and keep this stuff in the same way that it was presented to us so i don't make too much of a mess try and re-put these back because then we look at the boosters you know the boosters proper now that for the boosters if i'm not mistaken they don't have a reseal ability uh, so you you might need to buy some of those uh, plastic boosters that usually you put around seal booster packs to protect them if you will collect them and you might need to have those because this is supposed to be you know you open it up it's like jump start shuffle up and play so you take two and you're gonna have the different colors and so on and so forth so this is it and there's nothing else inside of this box except for well more boxes <laughs> which you don't need so i'm gonna put this away on the side okay so i'm gonna start i'll try and keep each pack in its own little thing I will go from there. Again, we're just looking at the product in and of itself. But let me know if you've played this in the comments down below. How fun is it? Is it any good uh, or not? Who knows? So here we have, it's exactly like Jumpstart. You have Semi Combine. So that's going to help remember. So in Semi Combine, you have, let's see, what do we have? Also, the, the packs are very, very brittle. So Semi Combine, you have Sage's Row Savant, which is a 2-1 that costs 2. The Dolkin Wizard is blue, one inch is battlefield. Scry 2. Passwall Adept, which is a 1 3 human wizard, cost 2. For a 3 target creature, can't be blocked this turn. Okay, that's interesting. And then Scuttling Sentinel is a 3 2 crab elf, it costs 3 of any of the semi colors times 2. Flash Vigilance, 1 in the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control until the end of turn. Uh, that creature becomes a blue crab in addition to its other types and it gains hex proof. So this is a protection. And then we get Scatter Eel, is a 3 3 that costs 4 for 3 and you adapt. So you add two plus one plus one counters on it. If it didn't have plus one plus one counters on it. And then we have the roaming ghost light, which is a three two spirit that costs five, has flying when it's the battlefield. Return up to one target card, non-spirit creature through its owner's hand. So I think this is going to be very much in the strengths, from what it seems like, of the colors themselves. So um, from, from what I can see, the colors combination and what the color wants to do is very much that. So controlling um, this is semi so it seems like it's trying to give counters and here we have helium's quarter giggity it's a zero zero that costs five it's blue for graph three with this creature enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it whenever another creature enters the battlefield you may move a plus one plus one counter from this to another creature and then for one generic attack a creature with a plus one plus one counter it gets flying until the end of turn fairly expensive for what it's trying to do slip at the bank of course being reprinted and i'm to be fair i don't know if any of these cards have been reprinted or they're new 
new. I have not looked into this. I'm, I'm going in fresh. So this one I know. I think this was a new Capena card. Instant blue. He put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It phases out. Then Rapid Hybridization. Now this one, you destroy target creature. Can't be regenerated. Then you replace it with a 3-3 Frog Lizard. And then we get the Simic Signet, of course. Now we get the Psychic Impetus. It's an aura that costs three. And target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gets goaded. Okay, that's interesting. And then what do we have actually i'm just going to put this here throbbing isle now it enters the battlefield tapped and when it says battlefield choose a color other than blue it adds you tap it to add one mana or blue or the chosen color then semi guild gate of course semi gross chamber and then the rare which is unruly crassus or crassus it's a four four shark octopus lizard it's definitely combine and it costs three and it's got semi kind of cost and trample when it attacks you may have the base power and toughness of another creature you control become XX until end of turn where X is unruly's X powers. And that's not bad. And for five, you can adapt, meaning that this, this creature has no plus one, plus one counters. You put three plus one, plus one counters. So that's a depth three. Not bad. That's annoying. And then we have Master Biomancer. It's a two, four elf wizard. It costs four. The same make each creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one, plus one counter on it, equal to the power on this creature. And as a mutant in addition to its other types, very, very strong, of course. And then you get five islands. Not bad, not bad. So you would clash this together and try and win. I would reckon the power levels should be similar amongst any and all combinations of the decks that you can find here one would hope so this one really wants to create counters and a little bit of control but overall it's more the counters part of putting a plus one plus one and protecting my creatures and making them bigger to deal more damage to you well, there goes the first deck and then we'll continue on and i know if i'm not mistaken that you might not be able to get all of them if it is like jump start and correct me if i'm wrong let me know in the comments down below it, it could be that there are color combinations that you won't be able to get in here um maybe you can get more than one we'll figure it out because in the end there's um there's four times two so that's eight i think you know we're gonna miss out on two unless you know where you can also get duplicates because yeah there are 10 color combinations in the ravnica guilds and then we have the golgari swarm i like this one okay golgari guild mage of course let's return a little leering on looker I mean, some of these cards just don't even have the... I just noticed. I don't know if there were other ones that didn't have it here. Because uh, it down, that's a card from the set. The Murders of Carnival Manor set. We don't have that here. So we've seen this card before in our reviews. Then we have the Gorging Vulture. Flying 2-2. That costs 3. When it enters the battlefield, mill 4 cards. You gain a life for each creature card mill this way. And then you get Tribune of Rot. Which is a 3-3 Elf Shaman that costs 3 Golgari. And any of the cost whenever. Attacks, mill two cards for each creature card mill this way create a one one green sapling so it very much wants to mill create tokens that seems the case so far whenever you mill you do more things so pintiless gorgon it's a two two gorgon that costs three and golgari dark dodge this is very strong actually this deck so far seems to have a bit more than the semi combine but i might be wrong i'd have to play with it it's hard to just tell um because it's such a small pool of cards venomous hierophant 33 golgon cleric that has death touch cost four is black when it enters battlefield you mill three cards so again mill interaction you want to be doing stuff with it then status and statue it is a double card it's an instant on both sides on the status side target creature gets plus one plus one gains death touch until the end of turn and on the statue side it costs four and it's golgari as well destroy target artifact creature or enchantment okay so some removal here that's always appreciated and it's an uncommon so i'll put it there then we have the golgari signet uh corpse churn instant it costs two is black mill three cards when you may return that creature card from graver to your hand and because you're milling so much that is good to have then we have deal gone bad it's an instant it costs four take a creature gets minus three minus three until the end of turn take a player mills three cards Remember, you don't always have to mill yourself but also because yeah you can do a couple of things here but i've only seen a couple of like four cards that do interaction with milling so far thriving more of course go guy guild gate the rock farm and then we have amzu swarms hungers the three three insect human shamans or shaman and it costs five and it's Golgari Flying Menace. Other instances you control 
control have menace and when every one or more cards leaves your graveyard you may create a one one black and green instant creature then put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the greatest mana value amongst those cards do this only once each turn the limitation of once each turn is a bit annoying because with semi combine you can do a bit more um if you have the mana for it i don't know how lengthy these games would be to be fair because it's quite a short pool but yeah it's it's interesting and uh yeah whenever one or more card leaves your graveyard i've seen what's um uh, maybe one that does that maybe two so we'll see it's, it's not bad dead bridge chant cost six it's an enchantment it's golgari and when it enters the battlefield and mill 10 cards and i begin to you choose a card random in your graveyard it's a creature card put it onto battlefield otherwise onto your hand so this is what it's trying to, to synergize with of course and then you get five swamps so there you go and yeah um what should i say it's got more interaction than the semi combine in general but it, i think it's, it's still a very interesting build I, I don't know you know it's such a small pool i'm not used to playing with such a small pool of cards but it's nice it's definitely there why not and there we go and we continue on we have six more to do okay uh, well um I wonder though how you actually play with these decks. Is it by killing something or doing something like getting to a certain point? Oh, I see that you get duplicates then. So it's, you have to open quite a few to be able to, to get the same one, if you know what I mean. It's kind of a bit annoying to, to be honest that, because then yeah, you have 10 possible combinations you have to open quite a bit. And because this is supposed to be a replayable game, either you buy like, quite a few or you're just replaying the same cards over and over and you know in most of the uh, board games that's the case but i don't know if it really dampens the the spirit of the cluedo game in and of itself because you're playing magic with the same cards over and over that's not just cluedo that's what i mean anyway we have ords of syndicate which is a new one you get a twilight panther it's one two that costs one and for black it gains death touch until the end of turn syndic tie off tides it's a two two for two extort oh nice and it's, it's always nice to see extort then we get a Johnny's primate of course i'm gonna regain life so this is gonna be an aristocrats ors of dank and uh the vampire of viscopa viscopa vampire three one that costs three life linker not bad angel of vitality is a two two that costs three flying one if you would put gain life and get a much life plus one gets plus two plus two as long as you have 25 or more life syndicate messenger flying after life one and it's a two three for four and then we get glorifier of dusk i'm thinking that this is going to be one of the stronger ones because of the flying and also the life gain and if you're playing a short game the if you can't outburn their life gain and you can't hit them in the air or stop their attackers with your blockers in the air then yeah you're gonna be having a bad time four four glory fire does cost five and it's a vampire soldier pay two life gains flying and pay two life gains vigilance so that's of course stuff to do with your extra life deadly repost of course afterlife insurance cost two is one generic and then any of the arts of instant creatures you control and gain afterlife one until the end of turn okay so whenever they die you create a one one white black spirit so it's it's okay it's good if you get board wiped which i haven't seen a board wipe at least you can do that or you just do it for one specific and again it goes in the air so it's quite annoying tandem tactics that's an instant cost two up to two target creatures each gets plus one plus two wow yeah yeah this is very much aggro to the face it's got quite a lot of combinations then we have the thriving heat the hordes of basilica and gilgate then we have the syndicate heavy four four that costs four and it's hordes of giant rogue extort and then at the beginning of each end step so no yours any end step if you gain four more life this turn you get to investigate so you get to draw more cards and it shouldn't be too hard to get from like oh cancel judgment okay i haven't seen this i was it um or the spark starting with you each player votes for non-land permanent you don't control exile each permanent with the most votes or tie for most votes okay so you play this with the four players that can do this i guess okie dokie um seems to be one of the stronger ones so far the uh, this ords of syndicate of course it depends also how you splash and so on and so forth but it seems to be one of the stronger ones because of two very simple strategies which is uh well life link and flying which in small games can really really make or break next up we have oh again or the syndicate 
And then, do we get another Simic Combine? Is this like repetition land as well or? Okay, we have Selesnia Conclave. I'm just gonna open them up just to see what we could get or not get. And then we'll check from there, just in case. How's the mirror? one of my favorite ones that and i just loved esper the whole idea so i think with demir or azurius okay so yeah we have a bit of duplicates here so these are the last two ones that we will look at then sinesni conclave which i would reckon would want to maybe counters putting counters and then life gain or we'll have to see oh or create yeah and create tokens and counters then doom traveler one one that when he dies he create a spirit token flying or as creature one three flyer that gives creatures you control plus one plus one until the end of turn for a very expensive so not that great the guild mage that's always really nice then we get the seller of songbirds is one two that costs three it's white uh human when there's this battlefield you create a one one white bird creature token will fly so again it's just token generation some blood rumblers star four cost four and power is equal to the number of creatures you control so the wider you go the better it is herbis protector is a one one human cleric cost six when it's this battlefield you create a, an angel token Four four flyer, very nice. God's willing, of course. It's always nice to give protection. Rootborn defenses. You populate, okay. So that's not bad. It costs three. It's an instance white creature. You populate and then creatures you control gain a destructible until the end of turn. So this is actually really really good, uh, especially in, in like a game of commander. This would be a really good card. So this protects you. But I haven't seen a lot of board wise. So I think it just protects a specific set of cards. Or whenever you're going to combat you don't want to lose too many attackers martial impetus as an enchantment aura cost three enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and is golden and whenever it attacks each other creature that's attacking one of your opponent gets plus one plus one until the end of turn of course <laughs> so you can, you can kill it conclave tribunal makes a return of course that's a way to exile until it leaves the battlefield so it's prison and fine thriving heath celestine gilgate sanctuary then we have conclave evangelist is a four four elephant cleric that costs five and it uh, has myriad whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than the defending player you may create a token that's a copy of this creature and then it's exiled at the end of combat so whenever conclave evangelist deals combat damage to a player create a token that's a copy of wow okay so that copy stays oh tristani and discordant is back okay that's really really strong in this deck if you get this that's i think the the strongest mythic so far this is going to be an interesting deck i think so far the ords of and the selesnia ones seem to be the more annoying ones more so than simic and golgari but again i have to play to see and then we have house the mirror which is probably gonna be control maybe sack maybe i don't know destroy all together we'll see erratic visionary is a one three human wizard costs two and for two and tap draw a card and discard a card so loot away the mirror guild mage so draws card and then discards cards so drawing this card i like the demir a lot a whisper agent is a 3-2 that costs three flash when there's a battlefield you get to surveil so put it into the graveyard undercover butler is a 2-3 human rogue that costs three whenever it attacks the player with the most life or time for most life it cannot be blocked this turn it's actually pretty annoying and then watcher in the mist is a 3-4 that costs five flying whenever it is a battlefield you surveil two so again graveyard interaction so i guess this in the golgari would go really well together discovery and dispersal makes a return that's very nice and then what do we get oh demir signet of course dramatic accusation of course and this is uh another one of the ords uh sorry mark uh, merges a kind of manner and yeah it's strange that some do get it some don't forbidden alchemy is an instant cost three look at the top four cards of your library put one of them in your hand and rest into your graveyard and then you can flashback it again in graveyard interaction the psychic impetus and this time on and the other decks thriving isle demir gilgate demir equidoct and then we have the memory vampire Part, which is a 4-4 vampire detective that costs 6 with flying and deals combat damage to a player any number of target players each mill that many cards then you may collect evidence 9 and when you do you may cast target no land card from defending players graveyard without paying its mana cost okay that's annoying and then dust mantle seer is a 4-4 vampire where is the cost 4 and it has flying and at the beginning of your upkeep each player reveals the top card of the library loses life equal to that card's mana value and puts it into their hand 
Okay, and then you get five islands. So, what should I say? I don't know, it's weird. It feels to me like they've just mashed together Jumpstart and Clue somehow, just to tie in Clue. I don't know how good the game is, so I can't weigh in on how fun the mechanic will be. I know that a lot of people beginners anyway enjoyed jumpstart but not to the point that it drove the products high up in fact if you know they discontinued jumpstart so it kind of maybe feels like they, they just needed a tie-in with clue for their anniversary of clue and they wanted to put something in it and they decided to make this happen um yeah i don't know i don't know really it's it's i don't know how fun the game is i know the clue is is popular and it's super fun uh, i had at least for me it was fun you know but other than that it really just depends on the on how good the game is once it's been changed and adapted to magic the gathering or with magic the gathering inside so you know what i would have rather appreciated a portable version of clue with a spin of magic in the rules of clue and some extra cards that you can get not play inside but commander mustard and whatever with the cards that you can play it as clue or in your own deck when you play commander etc maybe that's something that would have been a bad idea but again i have not played it i'm not judging or i'm not criticizing it all i'm giving is my opinion i'm thinking that perhaps this is a mesh of jumpstart and clue anyway that's it for from sky and if you agree let me know in the comments down below if you don't agree and if you try the game and it's super fun just let us know we read and reply to every one of our comments and also if you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as we are a small channel it does help us immensely and until the next one and where we will be unboxing and reviewing all the commander decks for this wonderful expansion from sky and i we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next one bye